everyone. Welcome back to my modern homestead. If you are new here and you don't already know, my name is Janet and I'm so glad you're here. Today is Titus Tuesday. Y'all had so much going on. I just had to stop and breathe a minute. I needed this time today. It's actually Monday evening when I'm recording, but so much is on my mind. I just had to stop. I couldn't get anything done. And I flipped through my little book and I have this to share with you today. The Lord has given you so many gifts and talents. I hope you were reminded of how much your presence makes a difference in this world. And the verse is James 3, 17. And the verse on here comes from the um, NIV, but I'll read it to you from the King James Version. I'll get to it. Y'all look at my Bible. This was my mama's Bible. <laughs> it's purple. How sweet is that? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for those beautiful words. But the wisdom that comes from God is first peaceful. Hmm, that's good. Our greatest fear should not be our be of failure, but of succeeding at things in life that don't really matter. How true is that? That's by Francis Chan. Mm, good words. And as I said, this is Tea with Titus. And we call it Tea with Titus because it's taken from Titus 2, 3 through 5. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Titus 2, 3 through 5. And this is Matthew six twenty one. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So as we go throughout our lives, especially those like me in the budgeting and community, uh, the saving and budgeting community, it's easy to get distracted by the money and the savings. We have to stop, or I have to stop and think, where is my treasure? Where is my heart? Where are my thoughts today? Just like today, I had to stop and breathe and focus on my creator, the one who gives peace and clarity. He's not a God of confusion. And this is my time to be intentionally grateful for the things he has already given me and so many of his wonderful blessings. And just under my salvation, I am thankful for my husband. I am thankful for him for so many reasons. One reason is that he provides clothes for us to wear. <laughs> Especially right now when we're getting ready for the cruise, which is part of the stress. <laughs> Stressed out about getting ready for that. I forgot to push my candle back. I hope that's not creating problems. But, um, yeah. It's just a lot to think about and get ready for. So, I just appreciate him being so generous in providing for us. You know, he could be one to say, go out and get a job and buy your own clothes. But he's not. So there. 
the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Dear God, thank you so much for my husband. Dear God, I thank you that you work in both of our lives to bring us together. You work in our lives to help us think more like you, Father, and to act more like you. And I thank you, Father, for providing work. Even when things don't work out the way that we try to make them work out, and even when we try to do the right things and make the, the right decisions, that you're there, God. You're always leading. You're always guiding. And in all these years, Father, you've never once failed us. And I know you'll not fail us now. I thank you, God, for loving us. And I thank you, God, for my husband. I just pray that you bless him, continue to provide for him, continue to give him wisdom to lead and guide and direct us and give him wisdom for loads he needs, Father, for work that he needs. Provide those loads. Dear God, we've always trusted you and we trust you now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Then after my husband, I'm so thankful for my children. I'm so thankful that they are helpful. <laughs> oh, they're so helpful. Jake helps so much around this house. He helps his daddy. And when his daddy's not here, he helps keep everything running, especially outside with the animals and cutting grass and checking oil and all those good things. And Alyssa, she's always helpful in the house every day. Doing dishes, helping clean, helping with laundry. You name it, she's doing it. And I'm very grateful. Helping me in the kitchen if I need it. Cleaning the dishes. Oh, dear God, I'm so thankful for my children. I thank you for the blessing that they are. Father, as they enter these adult years, help. Help me be the mama I need to be. Give me the wisdom that I need. Dear God, show me the paths you would have me take. Teach me to lead and guide my children, even as they're getting older and they don't need mama as much, but yet they still need that wisdom, dear God. God, I just pray that you mold their hearts and their minds that though they are getting older and starting to make decisions for themselves, dear God, that they see the wisdom in not necessarily always seeking the advice, but heeding the advice that's given to them, Father. But dear God, I also, on that same note, ask that you mold their hearts to where they do seek advice, but not just any advice, dear God. Advice from the godly Father, those who love you, those they see are living a life according to your word, Father, that they will seek advice from those people. God, I just pray that you always surround my children with friends who lead them to you, Father. Friends who always direct them to you. Adults who always lead and guide them in your paths, Father. And I just pray, dear God, that you always lead them and guide them in whatever paths, they, paths that they choose, that they will honor you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127, 3. And y'all, my house, I'm so thankful to have a home, a safe place, a comfortable place, a welcoming place to come home to. And I'm so thankful 
that my husband provided and we worked together to find a home that we could pay off and to not have that burden of that bill over our heads. And that's a huge relief. And I'm so thankful <laughs> that we have a washing machine where I can wash and dry my clothes. Of course, the dryer dries it, not the washing machine. But I don't have to go out and haul water and use a board to scrub my clothes. I can go put them in the washing machine. And I don't want to take that for granted. I'm very thankful, dear Lord. Thank you for my home. Thank you for that blessing. And I thank you that I have appliances that make my life easier. Thank you so much for all the little blessings that I all don't always recognize and give thanks for. But Father, that is a blessing from you. In Jesus' name, amen. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and, and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5, 1. And then friends. Oh, I love my friends. I love that. Hmm, which one did I want to choose today? It's hard. I love that I have friends I can go enjoy meals with. But not just any meals. I love when my friends and I can go get sushi, y'all. I love sushi and I love friends, friend dates that include sushi. <laughs> We can have so much fun. I don't know what color to color my chopsticks. It's so fun just to sit over sushi and try new sushi, eat our favorites. <laughs> it's just a fun time. Dear God, thank you so much for friends. Thank you for friends far and wide, near and far, old and new, Father. All my friends I haven't met face to face on YouTube, but that I already hold so dear in my heart. Friends who have faced loss and have broken hearts, Heavenly Father. My heart's been burdened for them, especially today. And dear God, if they're facing a hard day where those emotions of grief are just hard, and strong that you'll touch their hearts and you'll heal that brokenness dear God and you'll turn those tears of mourning into joy thank you father for such precious friends a man that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother Proverbs eighteen twenty four. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John fifteen thirteen. My friends out there, my YouTube friends that I call my family, I love y'all. I really and truly do. And what makes you happy, I rejoice with you. I love seeing all your accomplishments and your creations here on YouTube. And when you hurt, know that I really do hurt with you and I really do pray for you. And I just pray that God be with you. In forgiveness, y'all, when I created this book, this was one of the biggest reasons I created it. My heart was so heavy and so burdened, and I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to be bitter with grudges from things that had happened surrounding my mama's death. 
And y'all, God really has healed that heart. God is so good to us. I gave that burden to him and I prayed for it many, many times over and over. And he took that burden, those grudges, those hard feelings, those feelings of anger. And just as he's always done, it's hard to even remember what caused those feelings to begin with. I really had to stop and think about it now. Of course, if I try real hard, I, I can remember. But... That resentment and anger, he's replaced it with so much peace and release. I don't know another way to put it, but release. And that's what God can do for us. That's what God wants to do for us. He wants to take those burdens. Because he said, his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He loves us. And he wants to take those burdens. He wants us to give him those burdens. And I'm so thankful that he did. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 44 through 45. And y'all... He took that burden and I guess I just felt a new burden. A burden for our country. A burden for our world. Dear God, there's just so much in this world that can trouble us and burden us and bring us down. I just pray for your guidance and wisdom as we move through these uncertain days, Father. That you will lead the world leaders that you will give your wisdom for dear God there's no hope left unless you give that hope Father unless you give that wisdom and it's so easy to feel lost and hopeless in this world when it just seems like everything we've ever known and everything that's good just crumbles all around us but God you didn't crumble you didn't give up. And dear God, you were still God of this world. You were still my God. You were still whole and complete and holy and all-knowing. And dear God, you were able to carry me and all your other children right through whatever we may face in this world. And dear God, I just pray that you hold us right there in the palm of your hand. When we need to turn right, teach us to turn right. When we need to turn left, help us to turn left. When we need to go straight, help us walk straight, dear God, and give us wisdom as we walk this path of life. And dear God, help us and remind us to take our eyes off those things that can distract us. From you, dear God, you are our rock, you are our salvation, and you are greater than anything that's going on. And you gave us your word so that our hearts didn't have to be troubled. You gave us your word to remind us to hold on to you. And dear God, that's just what I want to do. I want to hold on to you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your comfort and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And lastly, dear ones, is missions. I'm so thankful for our missionaries. And if you've been with me any amount of time when I've done Titus, you know that this is probably my favorite folder or this my favorite pocket in this binder and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature mark 16 15 through 16. oh let's see 
I'm thankful that our missionaries, um, hold on, looking for a brown, oh well, that's okay, we'll use purple, purple is for royalty, and my Jesus is definitely the king of all kings. I'm thankful that our missionaries take God's word into all the world. We have missionaries that are so brave and they carry that word. Even when it's dangerous to carry that word, it means that much to them that the rest of the world has God's word. And I'm so thankful that they do that. And I'm so thankful that God reminds me that we are missionaries right in our own backyard to those that we meet and are around each and every day or when we're going throughout our day. And we can take part in that. And if we can't go out onto the mission field, we can always support those who are out there doing the work that we are not doing and cannot do or will not do. So I'm thankful for them. And each week I put money into this envelope just to send. And y'all, I'm so silly. I cannot remember to take this money to the church to send this to the missionary it goes to. But it's right here. It didn't go anywhere. It's still right here in this pocket. And it will get to her. <laughs> so each week I put $5 in there. And then the last page is for offering and tithes and just giving. And I no longer stuff that on this um, on these videos. And our last verse says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. Well, y'all, thank you so much for joining me. I hope something spoke to you today. So, until we meet again, may you be blessed. Love you guys. Bye-bye.